um, what say, morning all, morning all. Um, thank you for coming. I am so stunned that so many of you turned up. It's a really nice thing to do. Let's hope I don't mess this up. I say that because this is actually the first time I've done this, not spoken publicly, but done, done a launch like this. So I'm a little bit excited and un uncharacteristically for me, nervous. I felt nervous before, I feel offended, I feel nervous. But here we go, look, we're here to talk about housing, aren't we? And housing is the big thing going on in London. Yes, crime is our emergency right now, but housing is the big thing and has been for some time. And let's be clear about what's going on here in London. Housing in London is broken. It's been broken for a very long time now, completely broken. If you go back to the 1980s, the average house price in London was £24,000. Think about it for a second. Now, before you get too excited, average income was about £6,000. And I don't know about you, but my family wasn't even on the average. But there was an idea, and a real <coughs> idea, that if you worked hard, saved a bit, you could actually get a house. You could have somewhere to call home, to home you, house you and your family. And of course, when house prices are at that sort of level, relative to income, um, rents are reasonably low as well. But in a London that is growing, if you fast forward to now, average income is £40,000. And that sounds great until you realise average home price is £500,000. That's a huge sum of money. And I'm no mathematician, but what that says to me is, if you're on average income, I remember many people are below that, house ownership in London, home ownership in London, is an absolute pipe dream. And more importantly, livable rent is a pipe dream as well. People having to really struggle just to make that day-to-day that -day decision that drives everything you do. And what I want to take on is my housing journey. And the reason it's relevant to this conversation is, I, like many Londoners, had, I have been through the mill on this one. This is personal for me. For me, housing is a social mobility issue. It's a security issue. When you look at some of the situations we have in London, underlying those situations are housing. So if you take an individual like me, I was born into a council house. And as been said earlier, at some point you have 11 and 12 and sometimes 15 people living in that house. It was great fun, but it was also overcrowded. But the thing about that house, it meant that when you reached a certain age, you knew you were out. And where did you go? In my particular case, for a long time, I lived on different estates across West London, a little bit in Northwest London as well. Some of them quite rough, always with the same issue. Can you get house? Can you get house? What's coming next? And I ended up sofa surfing. When I look back, it's mind blowing to me how long I was homeless for. A period of nearly 80 years, in and out, in and out, worrying about where I was going to sleep, who was going to keep me. And I was very fortunate that I had the support of friends and family. All the way from university, I had two friends in particular. One called Scott, I wish he was here today, because he put me up for two years. I had another friend called Alex, who did a very similar thing for about 18 months. And that's when I was at university. Once I'd graduated, I remember the whole time I was working, the whole time I was working, this was still my reality. I graduated. I remember speaking to my aunt Norma, and she said to me, what are you doing? And I said, I'm about to take over the world because I have my degree. And she said, have you got anywhere to stay tonight? And I was like, uh, no. She said, come and stay with me. I assured my aunt Norma I'd be there for three weeks. <coughs> three years later, I was still there. Then I went on to the whole sofa surfing thing, paying rent. I did a lot of casual employment, so I was doing youth work because that was my passion. I had to top it up with a lot of zero hour contracts and those kind of things. And that made in and out of housing. It meant I wasn't quite eligible for social housing. And I was constantly chasing that rent. I've rented everywhere, Labrador Grove, Shepherd Jaws, Kilburn, Mays Hill, all over the place chasing that cheap rent. And the fact that so many Londoners have to live that way is an absolute scandal. Security comes from home. Without a home, you have no security, and all kinds of different things happen to your life. It's a black mark on London that we've allowed that situation not only to grow, but to get significantly worse. But then it leads to the obvious question, how did it come to this? London has always faced housing challenges. 
the last glory days of building in London were after the Second World War, when we built so many homes, 100,000 homes, hundreds of thousands of homes to house the baby boomers, and also new immigrants, like my family that came as part of the wind rush to rebuild the country. But as the population declined in London, and things began to change, we changed policies, we changed directions, and we did right to buy, which at the time was the right thing to do. Our, our population was declining, and it put hundreds of thousands of ordinary people on the housing ladder, including our current mayor's family, who benefited from that policy. But what was missed was London's resurgence, the fact that London would be back. London's revival, people come to London in their droves. It was characterized by a big boost in our economy and a big growth in property prices. So it basically meant, if you already owned a property, or you're lucky enough to get on early, you were absolutely laughing, absolutely laughing. But if you miss that train, like many, many Londoners, particularly young Londoners, because they simply weren't around, you are now almost definitely crying. And that pain, that missing of the boat, that big gulf between what some people's realities are. We heard earlier on about the bank of mum and dad. My parents weren't on that ever. There's not the bank of mum and dad where I come from. And it means most of the people, even in my generation, who have bought is because they've had that support. Without that, you're in real trouble. So of course, what's the situation now? In the 90s, London added a million people to the population. Billions of inward investment, and only 200,000 homes were built. In the 2000s, we added nearly another million people, and even less homes were built. Record loads of, of homes were built at that point. So what happened? Prices went up, but they didn't creep up, they leapt up. Rent went through the roof, house buying prices, absolutely mental. That's how we got to the 500,000 we're talking about now. So if a politician stands in front of you and promises you more houses under the current scheme we have now, in the words of one of the young people I work with, they are mugging you off. They are lying to you. At best, they're choosing rhetoric over experience. It simply is not going to happen. Sadiq Khan said that housing was his number one priority. And I don't doubt his sincerity, but you can't square it away with his actions. He removed the target for family housing, he failed to build on TFL land, and he banned us building on brown field sites. And what has that left us with? The lowest house building we've had for some time. We can't go on in that way. He's missed his own lower targets. By this point, he should have provided 100,000 homes. Nowhere near that. 34,000 of affordable homes. We're nowhere near the target that he set himself. He was given a record sum of money to do that. 4.82 billion pounds, and he still hasn't managed to deliver. But to be clear, money from government alone is not the solution. Even the money the mayor has now, he can't spend because he's relying on other people to do the building. He's not willing to step up and take responsibility for what needs to be done. I will. I absolutely will. We have to have leadership on this piece of London's existence or we are all doomed. We literally cannot afford to continue in the direction we are going now. So what we're looking for is that big bang in housing, a new approach. Look, I don't want to spend all my time knocking Sadiq, even though his numbers are the worst of all our modern London mayors. Because what I want to do is take the politics out of house provision in London. I want to remove the politics. Because a roof over your head, whether you're a single parent, a retired person, a, a, I don't know, a, a student, a young professional, a journal, think tank, whatever it is you do, a roof over your head is well beyond politics. I go back to my own existence, I only regained with those tales, because it drove everything I did. The group of boys I grew up with, 
Our life has been determined by our proximity to affordable housing. So we have to change that. Remember, to my mind, housing, not Brexit, housing. Housing is the fundamental, fundamental generation thing that we have to do now. It's a generational change we have to make. It's a fundamental issue of our generation is housing. So we must get it right. So today, I am pleased, nay, I am proud, proud I'd say, to announce to you Housing for London. I'll say those words again. Housing for London. The biggest boost to London's house building since the halcyon days of Harold Macmillan. <coughs> Housing for London will deliver what London is needed, when London is needed, and the correct type of housing as well. Appropriate development. It leaves the obvious question of how, and it's simple. We, the mayor, I will become the builder. We will not rely on other people to produce our housing. We will produce the housing according to what London needs and also in accordance with councils because ultimately councils have a very very good idea about what their local need is and they want to deliver whatever their political stripes they really want to deliver because if we need more social housing in Beckenham then Housing for London will deliver in Beckenham if we need more help to buy in Wilsdon then we'll deliver in Wilsdon no artificial targets randomly pulled out of the air, which we then don't deliver on, or did deliver the need that London has had, again, in concert with councils. So how will it work? I know you're sitting there now thinking, okay, sure, it's easy to say those things. You tell me how it's gonna work. And I'll tell you this. The answer has been staring us in the face. We need to build, the mayor needs to build, the mayor needs to own the entire pipeline of housing. We need to create the places to build, housing zones, in concert with councils, and get it done. Mustn't rely on others. Again, those arbitrary weird figures that mean nothing, they're just a, an indication of what we're not delivering, mustn't act as a bar to delivering on housing. But crucially, we mustn't let developers, some of the worst developers, hold us to ransom. They often deliver what works for their shareholders, not what works for Londoners. We will take care of that. They're often held to ransom by the housing cycle. We will not let that happen. We will have a singular, obsessive focus on delivery. We are looking to set up a housing provider that isn't motivated by the profit motive, but is motivated by delivery. And also the upside of that as well, it will give a swift kick up the backside to private sector, because they need a competitor that forces them to do better. Land banking has increased across the UK by 33% in the last six years. We need to make sure that that doesn't continue to go, grow by making sure that we provide a competitor to the private sector. Now, to be clear, I have no truck with the private sector, and it'll be an important part of delivering the houses we need. But we will not let our need in <coughs> London be kind of delivered on by people who are responding to their bottom line or not to the needs of London. Again, one more time, an obsessive focus on delivery, <coughs> creating the circumstances for councils and city hall to deliver housing for Londoners. No arbitrary target, no arbitrary target that we then don't deliver on, that the minute we're elected, we bury. There's been all manner of targets spoken about they all will change the minute people are elected. That we need to get away from. As an end point, I'd say this to you. London's housing 
the providing situation is in a rut. This is designed to get out of that rut. We have spoken to housing landlords, financiers, pension funds, everybody to understand what can be done to answer this question. We've commissioned independent studies to make sure we have a well-rounded, deliverable plan to get London's housing needs met, not just now, but into the future. It is designed to make sure that we are not at the whims of politics and politicians. We, we're getting all of that out so we can deliver for London. Fixing London's housing challenge, again, is a challenge of our generation. And it's a challenge that will benefit many generations. We have to get it done. The time for pulling figures out of the air that mean nothing to nobody and deliver even less is over. I, as the mayor, would take responsibility for producing those houses rather than producing excuses for why they haven't happened. <coughs> so when you ask me questions, understand this is about responsibility, it's about leadership, it's about delivery, it's about changing the situation that Londoners grow and live in. And my final words are this, this is the challenge of our generation. If crime is the emergency of our generation, housing is the challenge of our generation. Thank you very much.